In this video, I'll cover an article on prompt injection attacks against LLM agents. I published the article on WitSecure Labs research blog and it's titled Synthetic Recollections. You can find the full article at the link below. Imagine a bookselling website that has just launched an order assistant powered by an LLM agent. As a user, I can ask the agent for a list of my recent orders and more interestingly, I can directly ask for a refund. Let's say I want a refund for to kill a mockingbird. The agent correctly tells me that this order was marked as delivered, so no refund is given. However, by leveraging prompt injection to inject fake thoughts, actions and observations, I can alter the external reality of the LLM and trick it into believing that the order was not delivered yet. Moreover, I can also trick it into believing the book was worth $7,000. Bingo! Acting under false premises, the agent now believes the order is eligible for a refund and proceeds to credit my account with $7,000. If you want to understand how this attack works and what can be done to mitigate it, stick around until the end of the video. We'll start by quickly recapping what an LLM is and what a prompt injection attack means. Then we'll look at how the React framework can be used to transform LLMs into autonomous agents like the order assistant you've just seen. We'll then dive into the mechanics of prompt injection for forging thoughts and observations. This is what allows an attacker to alter the behavior of the agent. We'll close by looking at safe ways of building LLM agents to mitigate such attacks. A large language model is a sophisticated pattern detector able to complete text. We feed a sequence of words into the model and then it uses its internal knowledge derived from training on large amounts of data to predict the most likely subsequent word. If you are curious to learn more about what's under the hood of a language model, I have an entire series on YouTube dedicated to this. It's called LLM Chronicles and you can check out the playlist in the link below. When further trained and fine-tuned on following instructions, LLM's abilities go beyond simply completing text. They become capable of performing tasks like summarization, rephrasing, translation and so on. And this is where prompt injection starts to become interesting. Injection attacks are nothing new in cybersecurity. Think of the infamous SQL injections that have plagued websites for decades now. In an injection attack, we typically have a string which constitutes the command the developer of the application wants to execute. Then we have an external entity, the interpreter, whose job is to execute said command. And then we have malicious user input, which when concatenated within this string, allows the attacker to alter the original command to accomplish malicious actions. In a SQL injection, the interpreter is the database engine, the command is the SQL query, and the injected untrusted input is used to modify the query, say, to make it fetch unauthorized records from the database. When it comes to prompt injection, the interpreter becomes the LLM itself, the command, the full context fed into the LLM. This context will typically start with a system message or instruction, which is then used to guide an LLM's behavior and give it rules and objectives for future interactions. This will be followed then by any additional prompt and response involved in a particular interaction or conversation. Prompt injection happens when attackers feed LLM's malicious input as part of a prompt to manipulate their responses. One of my favorite examples of this comes from Simon Willinson's blog, showing an injection attack against an LLM-powered translation system from English to French. 
Here we can see the attacker providing a malicious prompt to make the system deviate from its intended instruction and instead start speaking as an 18th century pirate. The impact of prompt injection largely depends on the context in which the LLM operates. In isolated sandbox environments where the LLM interacts with just one user and lacks the ability to access and alter the state of external systems, the effects are often neglectable. However, when integrated into broader systems and given access to tools, even a minor prompt injection can have more significant implications as we have seen in our order assistant demo. On top of the ability to perform language tasks such as summarization and translation, LLMs show emergent abilities that allow them to emulate some aspects of human reasoning. Building on top of these emergent abilities, one of the most promising areas that stands out is the potential to create autonomous LLM-powered agents that can interact with the external world and potentially even replace humans in certain jobs. The foundation for this exciting direction was laid out in landmark papers from the past few years. In a paper titled Chain of Thought Prompting Elicits Reasoning in Large Language Models, researchers presented a technique to boost the reasoning abilities of an LLM by prompting it to think in a series of intermediate steps in order to solve a problem. Following this, the REACT paper presented an articulate framework that leverages chain of thought reasoning together with granting LLMs access to tools that allow interaction with the external world. This framework provides the blueprint to develop powerful agents that can interface with various external systems to perform arbitrary complex tasks such as our order assistant. To understand how React works, we need to look at its three fundamental building blocks. Agents are built on the actual language models and are responsible for planning tasks, responding to queries, or solving problems with a range of tools. Tools execute particular tasks, essentially allowing agents to interact with the external world. Executors connect agents to tools. They analyze the agent's output to detect tool calls, run the required tools, and then send the tool's output back to the agent. This process ensures agents can effectively use tools to interact with the external world. Let's see a simplified example of our order assistant agent using React. First, the LLM is instructed to run in a loop of thought, action, and observation, and is then given a list of tools that it can use. In this example, a tool to retrieve a user's orders. In the thought phase, the LLM agent describes its thoughts about the question it's being asked. A thought can be followed by an action to execute one of the tools available to the agent, in this case to retrieve a list of the user's orders. The executor inspects the LLM's output to extract the required action and runs it by using the associated tool. It then appends the output to the LLM context as an observation, so that the agent can access the results of the action and generate further thoughts and actions to solve the task it's been given. The loop ends when the agent produces a final answer, which contains the answer or message to show to the user. We're now ready to look at the React loop in action as it is implemented in our conversational agent. So as you can see, this uses GPT-4, but more specifically, it uses Langchain Chat Agent. This is um, a agent or a React agent, which is optimized for conversations. It works very similarly to the original React loop that we saw. Uh, I think the most important difference uh, is in the way it prompts the LLM to format actions. Actions are essentially JSON 
uh, objects with an action and the action input. So the LLM is prompted to use the tools in this particular way. Now we can also see how this agent is prompted. So we have a system message telling the agent who the current user is and what the user ID is so that it can use this information uh, for the tools. It's also told to only operate on this user ID and what rules it must follow or what steps it must take in order to fulfill, to help a user and for example, fulfill a refund. And it can do so by using a set of tools. So there is an order tool, which returns the list of orders for the current user, but there is also a tool to issue a refund, a tool to check the current date. Remember the LLM would have no idea what the current date is. Uh, there is also a debug tool and a tool uh, to fetch the refund policy. So the refund policy itself is not even hard coded within this assistant, uh, but it can be fetched by using uh, these tools and the LLM is prompted with all of this information. Let's now look at these in action. We have our order helper on the right side and the uh, logs on the left side. I'm gonna ask it to show my orders and we can now see the executor extracts the JSON action from the LLM. Obviously the LLM got the query, decided it needed to run that tool. So the executor can parse this JSON out. The tool is called order list for the user with ID 15, which is my user ID. So the executor executes the tool and then provides the output of the tool back to the LLM as an observation. The LLM looks at this and determines that it's ready to provide the final answer, which is here. So the executor returns exactly that answer back to me. Now we can see something a bit more complex when we ask it to perform a, to issue a refund, issue a refund for to kill a mockingbird. So now the agent wants to see again the order list. So it gets a fresh order list, but this time it continues the loop by asking the executor to run the get current date tool and then the executor returns that date as an observation. Then the agent continues the loop because now it needs to find out about the refund policy. So it uses get refund policy, which is another tool that it's got access to. And again, the executor runs that tool and returns the refund policy. Now the agent deems it's got all of the information it needs in order to answer the query. So it produces a final answer where it says, I am sorry, but your order is not eligible for a refund, which is the correct answer based on the observations that it got from running the tools. We are now ready to break down the attack to see how thoughts, actions, and observations can be injected into the context of an LLM to manipulate its behavior. This involves a malicious user providing a prompt which injects a pattern of thought, action, and a corresponding observation into the LLM context. This essentially tricks the LLM into thinking that it has called a tool and it provides it with a forged output for that fake tool invocation. This alters the integrity of the external reality the agent has access to, influencing the actions it decides to make based on these false assumptions. Okay, now let's see the injection attack in action. I am asking for a refund for To Kill a Mockingbird exactly as I did before, but now I am injecting a thought, an action. This action is to retrieve a list of the orders for my account. And then I also inject an observation. And in this observation, I am essentially providing for To Kill a Mockingbird incorrect information. I'm saying that this was not shipped 
and I am also saying that the value is $7,000. Now, when I run this, you'll see that the agent will ask to run the get refund policy tool because it needs the policy in order to determine whether it can issue a refund. And then it knows that it needs to ask for the current date, which it does, but it never asks for a list of orders because it thinks it's already asked for that list of orders and received the answer because we have injected that thought observation pattern already in its context. So by looking at its entire context, it now thinks based on this fake information that the order can be refunded. And as you can see, it does exactly this reasoning as a thought, and then it produces this action here to call the refund user tool with the um, my account ID and the money that we uh, provided here. The tool runs, it returns money refunded, which means it was successful. And so the LLM is happy. Final answer, the refund for your order has been successfully issued. Addressing prompt injection in LLMs presents a distinct set of challenges when compared to traditional vulnerabilities such as SQL injections. In the realm of SQL, the structured nature of the language allows for passing an interpretation into a syntax tree. So it's possible to differentiate between the query, the intended instruction for the database, and the user provided data on which the instruction operates. This enables solutions like parameterized queries to handle input safely. On the other hand, LLMs operate on natural language, a domain where everything is essentially user input. There's no passing into syntax trees or clear separation of instructions from data. This absence of a structured format makes LLMs inherently susceptible to injection, as they cannot easily discern between legitimate prompts and malicious input. The OWASP Top 10 for LLMs has a set of very useful recommendations to secure LLMs. We can map the issues with our order assistant bot to three categories in the current version of the Top 10. Prompt injection, of course, that we are leveraging to exploit two father and related issues, the excessive agency given to the LLM and the insecure design of the tools or plugins it's given access to. Tackling these issues involves setting clear trust boundaries, essentially treating the LLMs as untrusted entities. One trust boundary is between the LLM and the tools or plugins used to interface with the external world. We need tight access controls over what actions the LLM can perform and what data it can access. This follows the least privilege principle. Crucially, these controls must be implemented downstream and not left to the LLM's discretion. Moreover, we need to pair the LLMs with tools and plugins that have a robust and foolproof API, which is designed to prevent misuse by limiting the function and scope of the allowed operations. The other trust boundary is between the end user and the LLM itself. We need to implement human in the loop controls. This means users must approve actions before the LLM acts on their behalf. Of course, human in the loop also applies and can reinforce the controls of our first trust boundary. By addressing these issues, we can strengthen the security around LLMs, ensuring safer and more reliable interactions. If you found this video interesting and would like to learn more about LLM security, do consider subscribing to this channel because alongside my LLM Chronicles series, I'm also planning a series specific to large language model security. See you next time.